Oh, is this a hunting deal or? Yeah, it must be. Like I say, I've just seen some of these for the first time too. Life was unthinkably difficult back then, but it was honest and simple. Time seemed to have a different meaning. You know, it's been so long ago. <clears throat> it's a big deal seeing deer, you know. Grandpa was a worker. He was a visionary who lived life on his terms, who insisted he'd rather go to Ontario on the chance of finding fresh moose scat than go to a big city. Well, that's innovative, the way you flip, flop that up on that trailer. Yeah. You think anybody in the old days could think of something like that? <laughs> yeah. They doubt it. That's the garage where the guy stole the deer out of. Well, uh, Guy was from Minnesota. Lot, Naturally. Lot, yeah. <laughs> Where else would it come from? <laughs> oh, boy, look at that old sway back. Jeez. I think the stud got all of that. As a conservationist and farmer, he strived to leave the land better than he found it. But his greatest legacy, as a God-fearing man, he perhaps more than anyone I've known, left this world better than he found it. What a privilege for my old man and our buddy Gus and I to share the life and lore of William Moles. So we're, uh, this is Operation uh, Glorified Home Video. So this is my grandpa Bill Moles' uh, basically every bit of salvageable film that he's had of his life. And so we're here with Augustus One Shot One Kill Quaddy and my father Joe Moles. And uh, you guys are gonna be the commentators and take us down memory lane of uh, the life and lore of William Moles. So it's probably familiar to you. Oh, it's been so long ago. <clears throat> it's a big deer deal seeing deer, you know. Where would this have been? Oh, up at Hayward, I imagine, or Moose Junction, we're going up beaver trapping, or oh. Oh, yeah, driving in the pickup. Well, there's a sign. Yeah. So this is a road here. Yeah, you're on the road. The road. Yeah. The hell kind of a vehicle is that? Well, you shot a buck. You guys ain't beaver trapping. Yeah, that was. Is that you? That'd be that, you, huh? That, that's me. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> a good shot, huh? Wasn't fake, was it? <laughs> I don't know. Are you guys that forward thinking? You were faking shots? Well, is that the machine that your grandpa built? Yeah, yeah my dad. Didn't he take that up to Canada, too? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember something about yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's Moose Junction there. That's... Okay. Well, you had a bit, that's a big rack there. Yeah, dad shot that one. It comes sneaking through. He claimed it was on his knees sneaking through. It was about from here to the wall away when he shot it, too. That, that's <laughs> Grandpa driving it. Yeah, that's dead. So did that thing work pretty good in the dry, too? Or oh, probably yeah. better in the dry than in uh, the snow? Swamps, yeah. Didn't turn too good in the dry, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. What did he build that out of, do you know? Well, that was an old flathead Ford, and I don't know, just an old truck rear end. And... The hell did he make the tracks out of? Well, those were made by uh, 
Oh. Henry Swanson in Elmina, that when he made snowmobiles, you know. Oh. He sold them to the to the government. They used them for uh, mail carriers. They they sent, I don't know, five or six of them up to Alaska. Oh, the hell. Well, they had skis in front and then, and then there was two different size tracks. They had 16 inch and 18 inch. Oh. Well, then dad bought enough for one side, each side. Well, he had 18 inch on one side and 16 on the other. Well, then it always you know, <laughs> would turn, one, turn, turn one, way. one way. And then he took them off and then he alternated them, you know, a 16 inch and then an 18 inch. So some were shorter and it actually worked better that way because it cleaned the snow out better. So it wouldn't build up in the tracks. Oh boy. So as, as wise and as visionary as, as Grandpa was explain his theory about the tracks of a caterpillar. No, I don't. Want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you do? Were broke and break down? Well, well you we, were too damn little to yeah. do anything anyway. Yeah. Well, it did slide track off one time on the hillside in the snow, and I had a hell of a time getting it back on. But it, I don't know. It never broke down. No. What, what did Grandpa say to that guy that was always smoking? He must have been, because he was, wasn't a big hand of smokers, yeah, yeah, yeah. or a big fan. Yeah, yeah, well, he didn't like smoking. When he's up in Canada, they were moose hunting, and they were in the boat with the Indian guide, him and Andy Ross. They were, you know, just patrolling the shorelines, Yeah. going slow, and Dad said, there's a hunter up ahead. The Indian guide said, uh, how do you know? He said, I can smell his smoke. The Indian said, you can't. He said, I smell somebody smoking. He said, they rounded a bend and there was a hunter up there smoking. <laughs> <laughs> he called it secondhand smoke 70 years ago. I think he started the phrase secondhand smoke. My uh -huh. relatives all smoked in-laws and they were over, he'd say, I'm not sitting in here breathing that secondhand smoke, I'm going outside. So he'd take off and go. He didn't stick around with the smokers. William Bill Moles was born in the winter of 1908. He had nine older brothers and sisters two of which tragically drown in Upper Turtle Lake at the ages of two and four. His parents emigrated from Germany. His father was a miller by trade. His mother was a stout, stern woman who possessed the many skills necessary to survive in the newly settled farm country of Wisconsin. She taught Bill at a young age how to grow crops, raise livestock, hunt, trap, skin animals, and stretch a dollar. These skills were vital in withstanding the Great Depression. Bill grew to be tough and capable. He was a clever, unassuming man who rarely spoke a foul word. His appetite was one of legend, not only for homemade desserts, but also for the wilderness and adventure. Every year after the fall harvest, he would migrate to the Northwoods. Based out of a pond-side cabin, the heavily bearded, barrel-bellied frontiersman would spend the bitter winter months subsisting on potatoes, flour, salt, self-reliance, determination, and the bounty of his traps. A man before his time, my grandpa filmed and photographed much of his life. Time goes faster than you think, he assured me. This is history. And one day you'll be glad you can look back and see how things used to be. My grandpa was right. Let's see some video. Well, so did you guys hunt up there at Moose Junction a lot, deer hunting, or? Yeah, we alternated kind of Moose Junction and Hayward, I don't know. Moose Junction quite a bit. Uh-huh. Well, I think Hayward by now is just full of yeah. 
yuppies. Yeah. Yuppies and yeah. tree huggers and spandex short. Yeah. <laughs> a bicycle seat up her butt. There's fibs and mud ducks at Hayward. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that pretty much looks like every one of the old potato trucks must have been the same engines, I suppose. Yeah, he knew yeah. how to work on them. Yeah, they had old flathead V8s. Oh, big doe. Yeah, I was going to say, that is a big doe. Henry Hines shot that one, I think. What year was your like you're on a blacktop road there. Yeah, that might even be Highway six, uh, 35, I don't know. That's you again, you look like Kurt. Yeah. That must be at the farm, eh? Yep. Look at Grandpa's old. old shit. Dang, so that's oh, got to be hell. a big production, getting all that gear oh, yeah. ready. That was a sled he pulled behind. We don't get that much snow anymore. Oh. Just during regular deer season? They're, they're headed for Canada. That's Norman Wright. Oh. Ah. That's December. Just him and old Norman went. Oh, that's somebody else hauling logs. Did they go regularly, or you just remember one trip, or what? No, they went a couple times. And then uh, Kelly Blanche went one time, and well, Frank and Lee Cavusta went one time, believe it or not. <laughs> Lee? Yeah. <laughs> that was the only time I think him and Frank partied a little bit. Dad didn't go for that. <laughs> that one looks a little stiff. He spent the night that, out that's there. That's Larry Koenig, yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, maybe the one night Dad didn't get back till about 10 o'clock. He shot that one way back. Next day, Larry and I had to go drag it out. The wolves or coyotes didn't get out of them? No, no. So who's, uh, who's all who here? That's Gus Splat, Uncle Gus. That's Eddie there on the left? Yep, Eddie on the left. And Larry Koenig and I, Dad, that was, that was the crew that year. That's you up above? Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. And who's that? Top on the of right? the pile. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your buck there? Yeah, you shot? That, yep, that's, that's a dandy. Did you mount that? That, that, no. That's the garage where the guys stole the deer out of. Was that the one they stole? Yep. Nope, that ain't the one they stole. That's the one that was small. That's where the camper was parked. That's how close we were to that garage when the guy took that buck out of there. So what's that story? Well, that was Chuck's 13-pointer. That one? No, the one that was stolen. 16 point? 13 point. 13. Per, per, oh, it was a perfect rack, 24 was inches we figured. We didn't even measure it, didn't have a tape measure. Yeah, that was a booner. Huh. So what, yeah, what's what's the story there? What what happened with that buck you're talking about that oh. they stole? Well, we went to uh, church on Sunday night in Danbury, a couple, uh, I don't know, it's eight, 10 miles south of Moose Junction. And we were talking about the big buck that Chuck Emmett shot, Bernie Kunkel's buddy from Iowa. He came up hunting. And uh, yeah, so we were telling Telling some uh, jealous I'll husbands after Gus again. I gotta answer this. I'll take a break. Yeah. I'll piss on it. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. So, anyway, we were talking while uh, Bruno Lease and them guys were there, and well, then Henry Hines and Alfred Hines, and we were telling them about the big buck Chuck shot how 24 inch spread we figured it was. And so then we went back and we were eating supper then. And they come in the camp and they said, well, we had four bucks hanging, this one, and uh, two other ones, and then Chuck's buck, we hung four bucks that night. We brought him back and the guys at the tavern, well, the tavern's on the other side of the garage. <clears throat> everybody was looking at that buck and well, everybody helped us hang him in the garage there. 
So then we, we went to church and Vernie and his buddies, they went in the cabin. Ed. He was there, they went in the camper. Ed. He didn't go to church? <laughs> <laughs> so, <Not. laughs> so anyway, we get back. Like I said, we were gonna have supper. We were in there and then Henry and Dugan come in and Dugan said, well, I don't know how you guys count. He said, that's a nice buck. We only count 11 points on that buck. What the hell are you talking about? It ain't no tw uh, 24 inch spread either. Lucky if it's 16. So what are you talking about? So we went in the shed in the garage and opened the door while it was there was the rope. Oh and boy. A little, little skiff of snow and we could see where he drug it around back behind. I don't know, threw it on his car and that was it. We ran all over hell that night looking for him. Maybe good thing. You had a good it. idea who done it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Guy was from Minnesota. Lock, Naturally. Lock, lock. <laughs> Where else would it come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're only about six miles from the border. So, so a guy by the name of Lanny or Lonnie or something like that, somebody at the tavern said they asked him if he had got a buck and he said, no, but I might get it pretty soon. So that was the theory we thought he took it because he wasn't around when we come back. So. I don't know, we tried to track him down, but supposedly he had a girlfriend in Solon Springs. Never did catch him, but then the whole story was <clears throat> Oh, Claire, they had a sports show, first one we ever went to, and Joe LeCision and his college buddy went, and Billy and Jim and Matt Gores. So we went to Eau Claire to Deer Classic, and Noel Feather was there with a whole bunch of deer. And I stopped and I looked, he had a 13 pointer there and I kept looking at that 13 pointer. And Jim Gore says, what are you looking at, Mogi? And I said, I don't know, we never did take a picture of those bucks we shot, you know, Chuck's buck. I said, the one that got stolen, I swear that's his buck. I said, I still got the picture of that buck in my mind, but don't have a picture of it. Yeah. So then I asked that Noel Feather where he got it. He said, well, he said, I can't really say where I got it, but I bought it off a guy, he said. So I still swear that was Chuck Spuck. Kind of ironic story, huh? Oh, that's a pretty good story. Yeah, I got good stories. <laughs> <laughs> Not great ones like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I swear, that's... Yeah, Keep her moving. Yeah. Dang. Well, these are probably the same two bucks. You guys just keep moving them on the truck, so. For we pictures. Were, you you we guys were, were like original Instagram. We, we Grandpa was that. the original Instagrammer. <laughs> we wouldn't do that. <laughs> How old do you reckon Grandpa is there? Oh, I don't know, what would he have been? He's got the Savage. Yeah, he'd have been in the 60s. Well, I think he's going back to his moose kill where he killed the two bulls. I think Norman Wright's probably filming this. This is Canada, I think. This is in Canada now? Yeah. I think he had already shot his two bull moose and he's going back with his uh -huh. Savage. Oh, here we well, are. Maybe here, maybe here, here. Old two track. That most junction country, yeah. Yeah. Huh. So you're back in orange now, though. Yeah. So you're a little. You still got thing up there at Moose Junction, or? No, we never That's had all. any land or anything. Oh, you didn't? No, we just camped wherever. That was the bear dad shot. A pretty big bear. So you're back home there? Yep. That was in the middle of Mammy Swamp, we called it. Dad drove the snowmobile through the swamp. And then there was a couple little islands with brush on. And we chased two, he chased two bucks in the bear, <coughs> bear he found the bear den in there then. Uh -huh. Is that Roman moles? Yeah, that could be Roman. So, when you guys were hunting up there, did you make deer drives or how the, how the hell were no, you? No, no. We just usually went on our own. Oh. A couple times we'd just fan out, you know, about 
300 yards apart from the moose road, you know, and then just slow hunt, you know, and kind of hopefully kick one on to Kill one another. somebody else, yeah. Yeah, the one time Vernie and Ronnie and Chuck, they had a couple porcupines up the up the tree and we were walked south of the moose road. Well, I heard them shoot and then laugh and then I heard them shoot some more. So I just sat, knelt down, well, here come a buck. And uh, well, I had shot two bucks and I gave my 30 out six to Chuck Hines, Heinie's boy, to use. And I had a little 30 caliber carbine I bought online, or well, not online, on magazine. I think they were selling them, you know, Korean war machines. Well, and, outdoor life. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, that's where I bought my first gun. Out of I mean, outdoor outdoor, life for there was nine dollars. There was no <laughs> things left in it, you know. So I had a 15 shot clip or a 30 shot clip with it. Well, I had some hollow points. I had five hollow points in in the gun, and then the rest I had steel jackets. Well, this buck come running through after they were shooting, you know, scared the buck to me. So I started shooting with that carbine, you know. I shot 13 times. <laughs> the hollow points must not have hit or whatever. Anyway, I gave the, well, Vernie ended up taking the buck back to uh, Iowa with him. And he said there was five holes in the chest about the size of your fist. I think it was all steel metal jackets, you know, that went yeah. through before he tumbled over, you know. Well, at least you got him. Yeah, I was I was hitting him. <laughs> who, who is this here? That's me. Oh, okay. So you got a rifle and just oh, going know. over a oh. beaver beaver hut? Well, I think that's 22 I'd carry along when we were beaver trapping. Mm. Shooting rabbits or partridge. Is it Eddie Ross always just like goofing off? Oh, yeah. He's always laughing. He's, he's kind of like Magoo, but he, yeah, he's good hearted. <laughs> Oh, here comes the snowshoes. And Eddie Ross, was that was kind of like Grandpa's lifetime hired man? Yeah, oh, buddy, yeah, they went to school together. But did he work for Grandpa kind of full-time or just no, kind of he off? Was just on potato harvest oh. or planting, you know, he farmed two milk cows. He'd help out on potato harvest. Who's that old boy on the right? Oh, that's uh, Smokey Evers. And Norman Wright. Who's doing all the filming? Dad. Huh? Didn't think he even had them. Oh yeah, then. he had. He had a Super Eight or Super Eight. Yeah. Okay. Now we're back to hauling out big bucks. You no, know, you guys are moving. Yeah, moose. Oh, moose! Hey, there we go. Out to haul him out the moose. Uh -huh. Love it. Well, that's in a bit of way you fl flop that up on that trailer. Yeah. My God. You think anybody in the old days could think of something like that? <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. And they don't even know whether they have a penis or not nowadays. <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> So you just pull the sled by chain? Or no, that well, he's just using that to get the moose up. So he must have had a steel hitch for the... <laughs> it's like a, they sell these Argo things. They look like tanks now with these big tires. I mean, it's just a six, 60, 70 year old, older version of those things now. A lot of the Canadians use them for moose hunting. They got, I mean, tires that are like five feet tall. Yeah. I think they float. Yeah, well, like a like uh, a yeah, Argo yeah. on steroids. <clears throat> they still make the Argos too, but. Well, it looks like that thing's cruising pretty fast. How fast did they go? Oh, I don't know, until maybe 25 tops. And that's stuff that he made or somebody would make locally, some local craftsman. Like, I mean, did he cob this design off of somebody or is this, I mean... Well, it was kind of off of 
Hank Swanson's, you know, Eskimo Beal that he made for, like I said, they sold them to the government for hauling mail in Alaska. I think northern Minnesota, too. They bought a couple up there. That's the big bull he was pulling behind it. It lost its horns already. It was December, you know. Oh. There was two bulls together, that little one and the big <laughs> The one that lost its horns, that was big. He looked for the horns for a little while and couldn't find them, but I think I'd have looked more for him. That was a big old bull. It was tough. So there was no... Uh, Trail, no. S size limit, though, to... No, the no, they, they could shoot a cow. Horn. They could shoot a cow or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can definitely see the size difference here. Because what, in Alaska, it's what, 50 or 55 inches or something like that? Most areas are 50, yeah. Hmm. Only got one headlight left on it. It's <laughs> <or> tore <laughs> off. That's all you need. <laughs> it must be on some old logging road there now or something, yeah. huh? There it is, w w Willie's teepee, right? Yeah. Willie's little teepee. What the hell did you heat the camper with? A little wood stove? Yep. Wood. Yeah, I remember you had the wood stove was in there. I remember as a yeah. kid, like the mice were scattering when you'd go in that thing. Who's that you reckon? That's Norman Wright. Guy that had the cabin on the point. Of His the back is pretty straight. He didn't work real hard, did he? He was a railroad worker. Oh, he was? He was a union man, yep. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, he didn't have the same burl on his shoulders as Grandpa Moles did. <laughs> There's a guy. Yeah, it was a big difference. Norman Wright's built like me. Kind of stringy and weak. <laughs> Grandpa looks like he could still... Drive a fence post in those days. Well, what did they get on a track and follow a track? Yeah, well, he kind of or what? Yep. Well, when they pulled in there, the Indian guide said, "Well, when you guys hunt for a week or two and don't have anything, you'll come look me up." And Dad said, "Oh, we'll try it on our own." <laughs> He just ran into these two bulls together, you know. <laughs> yeah, he uh, shot them, and when you know, he brought them back whole, we went to the basement of the spud house where we had to wash potatoes, you know, in the wintertime. We had the wood stove, so we hung them in there and heated it up, and we scun them out and couldn't find no bullet holes. And I said, Dad, where the hell did you shoot these? He said, well, I don't know, I was aiming for the chest. He said, they they both dropped when I shot them. Well, I found out he had shot both of them right behind the ear. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, how close were they? Well, I don't know, they were, they were pretty close, but I I can't believe that's where, that wasn't where I was aiming. So we ended up, next, well, he had been missing a couple bucks. He was wondering why. Of course, he, like his kid, didn't sight his rifle in, so we sighted the rifle in. It was shooting about two feet off, high and to the right. Well, luckily, both bulls were running the same direction when he shot, so he, he shot them right both behind the ear. <laughs> well, that sounds like somebody else I remember. <laughs> well, I hit a four by eight piece of plywood with a you know, three, three or whatever. Well, that's, yeah. That's like that. Be yeah. good enough. As long as I aim two feet low and three feet right, I'm dead on. I'm all gonna tell ya. So anytime you see a guy in a cowboy hat, you gotta ask about him. You probably don't know. You weren't there. No, this I don't deal. know who he was. I think that that might be uh, Arnold Voigt. Dad went with Arnold Voigt. I don't know if he took somebody along or not. Oh, those are Germans they met. They were, up, they were up hunting and uh, there was a guy that had a couple Germans and they they wanted to come visit Dad and them guys at camp. So one night the guide brought the Germans over to talk with Dad and 
I don't know who it was, Arnold Voigt at that time, I don't know. That was up in Canada too. They met up with these Germans. Mm -hmm. Who was the young buck? Is that a guide there? Yeah, that is German. I, yeah, I think that's a guide, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's a German. I don't know. Well, oh, getting modern Jeez, here. Jeez, whoa. Holy hell. Pretty fancy. Yeah. Well, that's got to be Frank and Lee then. I was going to no. say, that wouldn't be Grandpa. Yeah, no, he didn't no. make it. He wouldn't be driving that. Yeah, Grandpa and Oscar were rough. They stayed in Grandpa's pickup one year up there in Canada. All they had was those wood sides and a canvas over the top, and they slept in the back of the bed of the pickup, and Oscar said, I was never so damn cold in all my life. <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> that's the only time he went up there. <laughs> uh, you know, once you're up here, you can't say, I'm getting the hell out of here, can you? <laughs> and didn't you say he'd drive that thing, what, five, six hours up into Canada, no turn signals or his trailers oh, yeah, and well, stuff? The, the old dump trailer there, he had no lights on it, no nothing. I can't believe they let him in. Well, where'd you cross to get into Canada? I don't know, he crossed uh, all up there by Thunder Bay. I don't Pigeon know Falls? Or... Yeah. So and that's Ontario then? Yeah, he ended around Kenora and Graham Road is one of the roads he was on or hunted off of. Is this a lake or, or a part of you're a river seeing, or what? You're, you're seeing what I'm seeing. I don't know. You don't remember. Or no, you weren't yeah, there. You, no, you, never, you never went moose on with him. No, no, no. no. Ah. <clears throat> you're too busy building my inheritance, right? Yes. <laughs> Good man. Too busy changing your drawers, probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what <laughs> you were preoccupied doing. See, my father never took me moose hunting either, you know, so. You're That's why lucky. I had to do it. I lucky, lucky I, never, I took you deer hunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the whiskey out, disguised as coffee. Yeah, the way that guy was staring at that thermos, there was no way it was coffee. <laughs> so Ralph Davis. Yeah. The one with the bushka? Yeah. I don't think him and Frank hunted too hard. Chaparral? So these are like the modern day, like kind of like the modern day Cabela's posers are coming in. <laughs> All of us sit Kikuyu guys are strutting in and there's some real legit. Are you listening to them? I'm not. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think he was listening either. <laughs> I gotta concentrate. I'm not a multitasker here. <laughs> Why, well, see, is that a moose here? I think we got another fake shot coming up. Uh. Yeah. Ooh, we got a scope on the rifle. We're moving up in the world. You miss with a scope. That's Kelly, uh, Kelly Blanche, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. How are you related to Kelly Blanche? Uncle. He was my uncle. My oh. mom's oh. sister, Leona. Okay. Married Kelly, right? Yep. Kelly shot a cow and a calf up there, I think. Two? I think he had us. Well, must be a cow. Pretty good conservationists, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Times are hard. <laughs> Don't want the calf to die alone, so just shoot it. There's Grandpa. Yeah, looks like it. Must have been splitting a brisket or something on there, huh? I don't like that this. axe. Yep. Oh yeah, there it is. Rib cage wide open. <clears throat> oh, we're 
dragon. Piece by piece. That's Kelly? Yeah, yep. looked like him. Must not have brought the machine. And Frank Scamper. Gosh, you look a lot more like Grandpa than. Well, I'm not in that picture. Well, I know, but that look, Grandpa looks like you. That's what I'm saying. It's a spitting image of you. That's why yeah. the, the the granddaughters all call him the legend now. Maybe it's the other way around, huh? <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa looks a lot like me. Huh? <laughs> I ain't getting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember third grade too. Uh, Judy uh, Hank. We drew names for Christmas, and she had my name. I didn't know who had what. Anyway, she gave me a jackknife. I was so proud of that jackknife. I told her at class reunion, I was sorry I lost her jackknife. She didn't know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you gave me a jackknife when we were in third grade. You had my name for Christmas. She said, I don't remember that. And I said, well, it was a good jackknife. I used that for skimming quite a bit, and I ended up losing it. So. Amazing what you think about. I got a toothbrush one time. Yeah, toothbrush? For Chris. For, for, for the crew name, I can't remember who the hell. No. Yeah. It looked like it had been used, too. <laughs> People were poor. <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> Probably not for tea. <laughs> but didn't, didn't you guys like, some guy asked you if you wanted to shoot deer and he took you on somebody else's private land? Oh yeah. <laughs> that wasn't that, that, that year That, though, that was, was a year later, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we took that pump out with us. Yeah, that was a year later. Yeah. John Smith. Bert, <laughs> Bernie said, yeah, his name is John Smith. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then we're hunting there and we ran into a couple hunters three, four other hunters. Well, did so-and-so give you permission? No, John Smith, you know. Well, we paid to hunt on this ground. <laughs> and we were supposed to be the only ones here. Well, I think Harold was his name, the owner. He's up elk hunting. You guys are in deep doo-doo when he comes back. <laughs> we're down there caught in our bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Greg and I were sitting there with three, four deer. <laughs> Down to count our bullets when old Harold shows up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Made her out of that one alive. So then deer hunting, deer hunted together for a bunch of years. Yep. Yeah. Then when Vernie didn't want to stay out in the cold again, my brother Vernie, so he's going to rent a cabin in town. Well, it was about the size of this. Okay, little cabin had a couple beds, so well, there was, I think, seven of us at that time. So then Richter had an air, air mattress. He, he said, well, that's okay, I'll sleep on the air mattress. So he's over there blowing up his air mattress, and I see Greg had a big buoy knife. <laughs> he's got it out sharpening it. And I look at him, and he rolls his brown eyes at me. And I shake my head, no. He goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say no. Nope. <laughs> so Richter's all blue in the face. Well, I got it, he said. Lays it out. Well, here comes Greg with a big bowie knife. <laughs> uh. Richter grabs him and they're wrestling around with that knife. Bernie, he, he wanted to leave. He said, he couldn't believe us anyway. The guy's gonna get killed and all of a sudden, shh, shh. <laughs> it was all over. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's ever liked me since then. <laughs> <laughs> then we had seven, seven guys in that little pickup camper pulling the pug in the trailer, going through the mountains. Jelmer. Driving with his elbows, looking for, <laughs> looking for deer and eating an apple and the, Van is going, or the pickup's going this way and that way all over. 
Vern wouldn't ride back up over the mountains with him. He's going to take the bus. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we had Eugene Hammer with us that yeah. year. Big hunter Eugene. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we drank that much beer though when we were doing that, did we? I don't no. think so. Just we, that first night. Well, that first night. Yep. Yeah. When the when the sheep herder's dog pissed on Vernie's coat. <laughs> <laughs> My brother Vernie's wife bought him a new coat for the trip. Well, he just got married. Don't you remember that? Yeah. Those three. We were in that bar. Yeah. Three, three of us, Greg and, Jelmer. and I were in back, and the other three or four are up in front. Anyway, Vern lays his coat in the back of the camper where we were in it. Now, don't you guys get that new coat dirty? So, I don't know, we were going to eat some pickled herring or sardines or something. Well, then we got fighting over the pickled herring or whatever, and we dumped it on Vernie's new coat. So we kind of cleaned it up. We get to this bar in Tin Sleep, Wyoming. Just pull into town while we had to get a beer, you know, so we get in the bar. And uh, Phil and I were gonna shoot pool where Vernie's gonna call his wife, you know. So he goes in the back to use the phone. And here this big old sheep herders in there with a, he had a 30-30 on the bar too. This is 1969. Had his dog laying there. It was like Friday night, you know, there was a few people in town. We get there and all of a sudden this dog gets up when we come in. We put our coats on this, by this table. Dog gets up, sniffs the air and walks around the table. Comes to Vernie's jacket with the pickled herring on it lifts his leg. My brother Vernie just gets on the phone with his wife and hollers, hey, Phil, hit that so-and-so. <laughs> Phil grabs a cue stick and looks around. Well, when he hollered, everybody looked. It was like E.F. Hutton spoke. It was quiet. That dog just pissed all over Vernie's coat. Nobody said a word. Went back down, laid by the sheep herder. Well, the sheep herder come, picked his gun up when he come around. They were just dead silent. Dog pissed, went back, laid back down. So then Vernie, <laughs> we were, had the pump loaded up too, yeah. and we spear, spilled the deer blood all over his jacket. <laughs> so we get back home, and his wife said, What well, is <coughs> on that jacket? Vernie said, Well, that's deer blood. I guess that's pickled herring. I don't know what the other stain was. <laughs> I don't think he ever knew what happened with the dog, why why the dog, or, uh, oh, it was dog piss, but he didn't know what the other stain pickled was, herring. pickled herring. And yeah. I get everything screwed up. He yeah, did pretty good. Well, hell, before we ever even got hunting, though, we stopped at a bar and Jelmer. got into it with them guys in there. Oh, yeah. We had that pub, and he oh, yeah. was telling that, that pub to go any place that his, their pack horses would go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah aren't you the cowboys? That's a good idea. Come on, oh, flatlanders. They were just about <laughs> to kill us. Oh, yeah. Ber Bernie, he was gone. But Damn yeah. right. Yeah, that was in Buffalo, Wyoming. Oh, well, maybe. Well, I can't remember where yeah, it was. That was in we're Buffalo. Yeah, was in oh, we can take him. Yeah. We can take him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Carla, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, the, the wrangler or the guide or whatever, there were some guys from, I don't know, Pennsylvania or whatever in there. And then the old guy, and then it must have been the young kid packer or whatever, and he said, I think you guys better leave. <laughs> and then, Jelmer. Well, we got a pug we can go where anybody can go. You mean to tell me a damn pug is going to go where my pack mule will go? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, looked around, Phil and Bernie are gone. Eugene's gone. Yeah. Me and Greg and Jelmer. Shooting his mouth off there. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably insult well, a man's wasn't... wife. Just don't talk about his mule. Well, <laughs> good odds for us. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, that's good stuff, boys. Pretty legendary. 